Welcome everyone to another episode of the Powerhouse Podcast. I am over the moon thrilled with my guests that I have uh, here in the ring with me today. My dear friend Gary Stewart is going to join us in a powerful conversation. And so before I even get started, let me just say welcome and thank you to the amazing Gary Stewart for joining me today. Thank you very much. It's an honor and pleasure as always. Oh, and we are going to have some fun. I yeah. adore this man. He is one of my besties. We <laughs> are going to have just a really deep, loving, open conversation. And um, I know you're going to walk away some powerful things. Because as you know, this is our space to really redefine what it means to be a leader. And it is all about leadership being a choice. It's a choice in how you choose to show up, how you choose to serve others, and how you choose to take that personal responsibility. And this is where we engage in those courageous, vulnerable, connected conversations. So with that, let me tell you a little bit more about this amazing powerhouse who is blessing us and honoring us with his presence today. Gary Stewart is a master constellation facilitator, author, speaker, has been documenting his healing experiences over the past several decades. As a young student of primal therapy and shamanism, his insightful writings provide a unique perspective on the correlation between the micro and macro cosmos, between our inner and outer worlds. We're gonna have a great conversation. <laughs> his first book on constellations, Many Hearts, One Soul, set the stage for his latest book, Master Your Universe, How to Direct and Star in Your Own Life, which you can find on Amazon. He speaks and leads healing workshops and trainings around the world, both nationally and internationally, and resides in Rancho Mirage, California. He's an expert in facilitating distance, family, and organizational constellations, and just does incredibly deep, powerful work in this space. And so, Gary, before yeah. we get started, once again, welcome. I'm so honored to have you here. Ditto, ditto. Same here. And I'd love to have a conversation about what is a constellation there are a lot of people in my audience that are thinking exactly. what <laughs> right i mean they're having the big question going um yeah. i'm lost I, you've already okay. lost it. okay so, so tell us what it is it's not about the stars it's not about <laughs> astrology everything has movement everything alive has movement and the the term was coined and it really stuck about 30 40 years ago actually in 1965 believe it or not virginia satir uh, did a, this modality, a psychotherapy modality uh, called uh, family architecture, mm. sculpture of your family. Why are the mother and father apart? They're supposed to be together. What's pulling them apart? There's an invisible force, like, like gravity or magnetism. So Hellinger was working with her, and he said, well, it's like a constellation. You see a picture in the sky. The, the stars show you in their position a picture like the Big Dipper, a bear, a scorpion, you know, a dragon, whatever. So he, that term just stuck. So your family system, uh, dead or alive, shows a picture. Uh, it's like a pictograph of a multidimensional story of your family's journey through space and time and your place in that. So you could say, you know, the parents are like the sun and the moon and the kids are like little stars or planets orbiting. Well, why is one person in a family system, Pluto, the alcoholic who just comes and goes, you know, uh, every five years in the family system? Or, you know, the sun and the moon are close together or the sun and the moon are farther apart. So we know there's hidden forces that are shaping our family system. And Constellations is really a tool to show us the subconscious dynamics that are at play. We don't see them, that they're there. Everyone knows there's gravity, but you won't think it's there until you're in an elevator going up or down too fast or you're taking off in a jet plane. Then you feel a landing. You say, oh, yeah, there is gravity. Oops, my stomach's upset. Well, that, that's at play all the time in any living creature. And uh, so it's the movement, it's the chi, it's the life force, and there's as much hidden in the life force as there is observable. Well, and, and that's really powerful. And I think, you know, understanding that it is a system that we're talking yes. about, a system yeah. that we have a role in. And so I'm curious because as people start to understand that there's family patterns and there's these hidden yes. forces that you talk about, these subconscious forces, mm -hmm. How does that impact and affect how we show up in the world, how we get to show up in our own gifts, in our own power, right, absolutely. especially if we haven't uncovered and understood right, exactly. some of those underlying forces that might yeah. be at play? Yeah. Generally, I mean, this is going to sound kind of funny. Generally, we don't. 
Uh, let's say uh, a lot of women, I've been really working, my whole new campaign is reclaiming your inner voice or your true authentic self. Unfortunately, a lot of women have been oppressed and they're not even allowed, their grandmothers weren't allowed, their mothers weren't allowed to even express themselves. That's why it's so important with the Me Too movement and what's happening right now, women are being heard and respected and speaking up. So we look at generations, women suffered in silence with sexual abuse, male domination, domestic violence, just to keep the family together. Uh, and now voices are being heard. So you could say a woman today who has a voice, when she's actually speaking up, she's speaking up for all the women who came before, who didn't have that voice. So we're really at a point of power now, I say with the divine feminine awakening. And uh, the cosmic irony is who better than Donald Trump to awaken? And uh, that's the gift he's giving us. He's giving us many other gifts. And I'm not a big fan, but there's a movement that's happening that's huge that I haven't seen since the 60s when Martin Luther King was around, um, the Kennedys, you know, and it's, it's active again. People are waking up and he's the catalyst for that, good, bad, or ugly. He's the catalyst for us waking up. And women are being heard and respected, finally. Yeah. And I love, I, first of all, I love that you went there. I love that yeah. it's a bigger conversation because I do exactly. think instead of putting a finger in blame and saying, look, he's doing this, they're doing this, this right, happened. Exactly. I mean, I look at even um, what happened in the planet, political landscape of how we arrived in this position. Yes, yes. And if you look at the whole circus show that was going on, which was mm -hmm. sort of a, it really is a mirror reflection of what our reality has allowed. Exactly. Because mm -hmm. I used to coin it as it's the desperate housewives of Congress, right? Right, the absolutely. Reality television blown up. But the beauty of it and the gift in it, and I love so much much that you went here. It's yeah. the fact that there is a gift in all of this. Yeah, there is an amazing opportunity for an awakening. Mm -hmm. where when you talk about when a woman's standing forward, and whether it's a woman or a man, but someone who's using their voice perhaps for the first time, yes. or looking in a way to really affect change and un- cover and discover some of those hidden stories and those traumas and that abuse and right. that repression or oppression mm -hmm. that mm -hmm. has been oh, there yes. when yeah. you're when you're opening up access to that mm -hmm. there's a ripple effect that not only goes forward but this is where I would love, and I love the work that you do, and I've experienced constellations mm -hmm. myself. I've experienced some of the group work uh, yes. Gary has done. I've experienced some work that other people in constellations yeah, yeah. have done. There's a fascinating, beautiful way that this is all woven together. Mm -hmm. And what I find really fascinating is the ripple effect that happens in the past. It's, a, yeah. it's almost as if it's a clearing or a healing. It is, a, yeah. And so talk a little bit about how those shifts, mm -hmm. when we, we talk about this moment, this opportunity, and it's yes. such an opportunity and possibility of Absolutely. awakening that's happening, what does that mean mm -hmm. on a bigger level? Well, on, on clearing that out and moving yeah. forward. Yeah, well, on a, on a macro scale, like, you know, a lot of people say, why are you going in the past? What's that have to do? Once we clear, because we're actually, just so your audience knows, epigenetically, we share our ancestral DNA. So we have a direct link to the dead ancestors and the living ancestors. Now, the cosmic irony is when one person in the family system, say the solar system of our family, does a constellation that everyone is affected in the family system without being told a constellation was done. So people start speaking about, I mean, I, I suspected sexual abuse in my mother's childhood. The, it showed up in the constellation. I didn't say a word to her. All of a sudden she admitted, oh, something happened when I was four years old within months of the constellation. And this happens across the board. And a lot of people, when you evolve one drop of consciousness, the whole ocean is affected. And that's with our family system. I also want to let your uh, listeners know this applies to business as well. Because a business is a family system. You have the CEO, the CFO. Mm -hmm. uh, they're like the, the fathers or mothers of a business. And if things are out of order with them, it reflects down to the employees. So everything is a system one way or another, whether it's family or whatever. And when I do business constellations, a lot of leaders of businesses project their family dynamics into the business. So the employees become children or a bad employee becomes that bad uncle or whatever, or that alcoholic that everyone's rejected. So with constellations, we include everything. Uh, we include the perpetrator energy. If there is a perpetrator uh, in a Jewish family, it might be the SS. We would include SS in the family system. Uh, Bert Hellinger, the developer of this, is about 94 now and starting to fade. 
Uh, he, the reason it works, the magic works, is because we include all aspects without judgment. It's true, unconditional love that, that leads to healing. And what I find in my newer writings right now, I'm working on a new book on it, is the adversarial negative energy actually is the catalyst for positive change. So if we throw out the negative, a lot of new age people, oh, keep me away from negative, keep me away from negative. It's like, no, embrace it. It's your teacher. It's giving you the Absolutely. gift to activate your power. So use that power. Know that they were giving you a gift. It didn't look like it because it was adversarial, yeah. but energetically, it really is a gift. And that's why I see Trump as a gift. He's giving us that adversarial energy. Take a stand. You want the environment? Fight for it. Right. What well, you want your voice? Stand up and speak. And there's a responsibility in that, right? Exactly. That's part of why. I mean, we have a culture that's created this sense of entitlement, and, and it makes me laugh when I hear people of my generation, the Gen Xers and yeah, yeah. even baby boomers talk about how the next generation is entitled. And a lot of times I put that back and, and put the mirror up and say, let's talk about what entitlement really means. Exactly. And you are the source of where that's coming from. Exactly. And we're teaching that mm -hmm. because we've refused to stand in those adversarial opportunities exactly. to face and confront. And it's amazing to me. And I, I so I'm absolutely thrilled that you went and connected this back to their systems and everything that we do. Exactly. And business is a family system. It is. It's a lot of times dysfunctional family system. Right, exactly. But it is a very powerful family system dynamic and things. And anything that you're carrying forward from your own legacy, your own mm -hmm. lineage, you are using as trigger points and projections. Exactly. I've seen it. I spent 20 years in corporate. Mm -hmm. I see it in the training that I do. And I'm, I find it fascinating because even in those spaces, human resources has how to manage conflict and it's all about eradicating conflict and right. removing it rather than inviting it to the table table exactly. in a way that's healthy a way mm -hmm. that people can be present engaged and it's the big mm -hmm. and conversation right what absolutely thought, okay but and it's we want to just over speak on someone mm -hmm. we want to be mm -hmm. overpowering someone mm -hmm. instead of saying and Mm -hmm. there has to be something else to bring to the table. Yes. And honoring and owning the responsibility of how you're showing up in that space. And what happens is most people say, I don't want that. I'm going to cop out. Right. Exactly. And they, they pedal backwards. And I think <laughs> what you're talking about is so many people right now are in that space of judgment. And it's yeah. that, that conversation. I think Deepak was the first one to say this and maybe not, but the worst four letter word we have in our English language is they. They mm -hmm. did this to me. Right, they right. did this. And it's not us standing in a space to say, okay, where is my power? Right, exactly. To change this because mm -hmm. it's energy, right? What mm -hmm. you're talking about is that ripple. And, and it's beautiful the way that you said a drop of consciousness mm -hmm. affects the entire ocean. Exactly. Because it's energy. You are creating right. a new idea. New idea and yeah. movement and. Right. And, and forward motion of energy that Absolutely. starts to create that ripple. It's casting that stone in the mm -hmm. right space. Mm -hmm. And yeah. so it's beautiful that you talk about that because I'm curious, Gary, because I know I felt this and it took me yeah. a long time, even in corporate, I really fought with mm -hmm. being an empath. I feel energy. Yeah really powerfully and we've I had this conversation do, do. Right? Yeah, absolutely. Well, in corporate i resisted it i resisted yeah. it very hard i resisted it i didn't want to talk about things in my family mm -hmm. and even just recently and i want to i want to bring some light to this too is i had a conversation that i sort of was joking but there was a lot of essence and truth to mm -hmm. it which was sometimes i don't feel like i'm tired for me I feel like I'm soul tired. Like I've right, right, been fighting right. a battle that's not mine for mm -hmm. a long time. Exactly. And what does that mean? And how does that show up for people? So that maybe that's the moment that they can start to say, oh, yeah. maybe there's an opportunity to do some of this work yeah. around constellations. And exactly. Stuff like yeah. Well, lo lots of times it's an old battle. So sometimes say your great grandmother had a battle with your father or a situation that she was involved in. And the granddaughter, great granddaughter would carry on that energy. And it's like, because things got stagnant and didn't change due to societal influences, let's say women always felt stuck. They didn't have a voice. They felt stuck. The cosmic irony to the whole thing is women are birthing the future of the species. And I cannot understand why they aren't given a place of respect and honor for, you know, and I'm, I'm a spiritual person, but I really think the repression starts with the Bible that, you know, Eve tempted Adam, you know, Mary Magdalene, it's all these negative images of women 
that they're less than or they're the corruptors of masculinity. And I think the oppression really has been 2,000 years since that book was written by a male, by the way. And if people don't know how the Bible was written, number one, it was edited by Sir Francis Bacon for King James to give him divine powers over everything on earth. And the other thing, when the, the Bible was created, language was created so women could not read the alphabet. They didn't want women. They wanted the barefoot and pregnant woman, and the men would have the words and dialogue so that they could use that to project the, the patriarchal consciousness over the system starting thousands of years ago. So we're up against a lot, but at the same time, we the Berlin Wall fell in a day, and so, right. so can this. This is happening. The fact that women are being empowered all over the world in Riddia, Saudi Arabia in a Muslim country women are saying no I'm driving the car now they didn't contact their Western sisters or anyone else <laughs> they, they're just shifting they say no we're gonna do this I don't want to wear my burqa uh, and they, there's a movement happening so the collective female is really rising because they don't want to suffer like their mothers or grandmothers did so I think that that's a great empowerment thing that happened. So when that happens, generally the first emotion that stops people from changing, this is where entitlement comes in, as well is guilt. When you buck the system, you feel guilty. Oh, what's going to happen? Shoulda, coulda, woulda. Oh, there's the fear and the guilt. And that keeps you in your cage. So any woman or man in a business situation or personal, I say, okay, my life's not working this way. Entitled, I'm not even feeling entitled. So let me speak up about what I really need. And then you have to be willing to carry that guilt. And it will disappear. The guilt and fear disappear once you do it. It's like the trepidation is what keeps you in the cage. You know, and um, one thing about the entitlement thing, if you really look at it, when people are victimized with the they that you mentioned, they're giving that they the power. To Absolutely. Blaming the person that you're projecting it on for keeping you in the cage when it's yourself that's keeping you repressed or in the cage because mm -hmm. you're using outside forces to do it. It's actually your internal force that's creating the negative external to keep you in the cage through yourself perpetuating. Yeah, and I agree with that 100%. It's actually one of the things, and I, I kept coming back to people that were to, to go back to even the political arena that has Trump and president, and regardless of what you think. Yeah, um, exactly. I honestly didn't think the situation in any way, shape, or form was a, a desirable one. It was one right. that we Me created. Either. What right. was interesting is they kept saying this party, that party, they did, and I'm like, no, you understand it's we the people. We right. created this momentum exactly. and energy, and we the people have the responsibility to create the change that exactly. now we're pushing up against. Exactly. And I think it's really fascinating because I want to play in a space right now, Gary, because I, yeah. I so agree with you. Um, I'm not a religious person, I'm a highly spiritual person, and I have a whole mm -hmm. lot to be said around you. It's interesting to me how people take every word of a book as right. a everything when it's been translated 27 million times. I know, exactly. and tell me that something hasn't been lost in translation. I just. And, and there's people that I'm probably triggering right now as right, I'm right. saying that, and I'm okay with that. Yeah. Again, to have the courageous conversation, because you being triggered is not me offending you. Right. It's you having an emotional reaction because mm -hmm. something is wound up in that. I'm simply mm -hmm. offering an opinion mm -hmm. and a belief that I choose to hold, right. and I take responsibility in that. And so I really want to create that distinction for people because I get there are people that listen sometimes that get very triggered mm -hmm. and know that that's an opportunity for you uh -huh. to see the mirror of the work that gets to Absolutely. be done because yeah. the trigger is just what Gary's talking about. It's that trepidation, uh -huh. it's that fear, it's that guilt, it's that shame right. that's showing up that says something doesn't feel aligned in the story that I've uh -huh. been given, what I'm uh -huh. holding onto as a belief uh -huh. and how I feel as a result of whatever's happening. And that, that's the opportunity to yeah, dig in. Exactly. So I want to play in a space because one of the things that I've launched this year has really been changing that what if. We get into that fear space of, well, what if this happens? What if we get shut down? What if they don't listen? What if they don't like me? What if they, they criticize me? What if they abandon me? And it's every negative lens of what right, if. Exactly. Instead of moving and positioning and opening up a more powerful and purposeful imaginative, so I'm curious, Gary, as you think about and see what's happening mm -hmm. and you know and feel the empowerment shift that's happening, yeah, the awakening, yeah. what's the big imagine if or the big space of possibility that you see unfolding as people start to step into that mm -hmm. space to take that responsibility to really mm -hmm. allow themselves to be awakened 
What, mm -hmm. what do you start to play with in your mind as you start seeing some of those spaces open up? Well, it's, you know, life is so short, you know, uh, and do we really have time to waste right now? I really don't think we have time to waste. And this is our dream. Do we want a nightmare or a dream? <laughs> Amen, so what, do we, right? what do we want to create? What do we want to create, you know? And take responsibility for that creation because, you know, a, a lot of people at the end of your life, you're not going to say, well, they did this, they did that, and now it's the end of my life. I gave everyone my power, and now I'm on my deathbed. Oh, I should have, could have, would have, should have, could have, would have. Oh, right. gone. It's like, <laughs> is, that, is that your legacy? Or is it like, I jumped off the cliff. I took a chance. There was a brass right. ring. Even if I fell, I'm not going to die from taking a chance and failing. And uh, some of the business people like Warren Buffett or whatever say, being comfortable with failure is what being a billionaire is. You have to be comfortable with taking a risk. You fall on your face sometimes, so you still keep moving forward. I forget if it was Richard Branson or somebody said, it's failing with enthusiasm intact. Yeah, I think it was Richard Branson that said that. I yeah, love and that. Yeah, keeping I love your it. enthusiasm even if you fail because those negatives in your failure are strengthening you to not make the mistake again, number one, and to take that chance and jump off the cliff and grab the brass ring, whatever well, it is. Well, it's the know. only way you grow, right? I mean, exactly. if it's not big enough to scare you. Exactly. It's not big enough to grow you. And I tell people all the time, I actually ask people, I'm like, how are you going to fail today? And they're like, Candy, right. what? Yeah, exactly. <laughs> and I'm like, seriously, how yeah. are you going to go so big that you know you could fall down, get bloody, exactly. and skinny? Because uh -huh. if it's not that big, exactly. you're not going to create that kind of effect. And I love that you use the word legacy because yeah. legacy is not something we have on our way out. Legacy is exactly. something we do in every moment we yeah. are breathing. You yeah. and I are creating legacy right exactly. now in this conversation. Yeah, absolutely. Right? And people don't understand that there's such power in that living aspect of your legacy. Exactly. How are you showing up and engaging and being present with people in every breath that you take? Mm-hmm. Absolutely, absolutely. And, and it's so necessary right now because, you know, uh, the beauty of Trump that I also see is imagine every woman that marched, 10 million women at least on Inauguration Day, the first anniversary, that's 50 trillion cells per woman multiplied times 10 million. And if that's probably underreported. So who has, in modern times has had that power to bring people to the right. streets? Nobody. And so it's uh, you could say that she is really alive right now and once she is alive it's not afraid we we already exist so it's like it's like do we want to exist in a shell or do we want to be out of the shell and more than not people want to be out of the shell right now the thing about beliefs and i have nothing against people who believe in the bible i fight with family members who are born again christians <laughs> about that is my my view on it is when you believe you don't have to think it's mm. been done for you and that's a wall that people feel safe in. And I, with total respect, if that's what they need, that's absolutely fine that's for them. And there's no judgment of that. If that's what you need to feel safe and protected, but those walls were created for other purposes uh, to control people. And if you look at the dirty laundry of the Catholic Church in and of itself, from the lawsuits and everything else that goes on there, their, their house isn't as clean as they pretend it to be. So right. what are you really believing and why? Well, and I can remember getting um, pushed back hard, even as a kid, because I asked questions. I've read yeah. the front yeah, of that. Exactly. I've actually engaged and read the entire Bible. And I remember one of my first jobs out of college, I was living in Cleveland. And I can call, I call my mom and I'm like, so how can we get taught this when this is a hip hypocrisy and this is a right. like yeah. i am not the person you could hear her rolling right. her exactly. eyes and yeah. it was one of those spaces that people would challenge my belief in a higher power because i right. did things i'm right. like having questions has nothing to do with a lack of faith it mm. actually is just an understanding and an awareness that i'm trying to yeah. embrace right. i don't find and and that's a belief i have i don't believe that any higher power above me is a judging space Exactly. And therefore, anything that I question, anything that I'm looking for answers, anything that I dig into is just an opportunity for experience. Uh -huh. yeah. It's an opportunity to challenge a belief or a story right. or exactly. a space. Because what if there, imagine if there is another side of the equation. Imagine exactly. if there is, and what, imagine if there's not. It's just a question. It's not yeah. a me coming to the table with a sword that okay. says, look, right. I'm going to. It's this or that. It's right. Not. It's everything. It doesn't have to be. 
I think uh, Shirley MacLaine said it best, consider yourself God, then act accordingly. Oh, absolutely, <laughs> absolutely. And that gives us the total power. And right. I believe we're all seeds of the creator, masculine, feminine, whatever you believe God or spirit is. And a lot of people, I think, uh, may misrepresent because, you know, Christ is actually also consciousness. It's an elevated consciousness. So look at that more as an adjective rather than a deity. And I think you'll feel deeply empowered by that. Ascending to your own Christ, your own benevolent self, your own understanding of good, evil, right, wrong. And if Constellations has taught me one thing is hold that neutral space. Mm -hmm. Allow to see what's manifesting because there's hidden power in the negative. There's hidden weakness in the negative right. as well. And um, when we can hold both, Albert Einstein said, genius is being able to hold two opposites simultaneously. Right. And to witness that, and I love right now I'm reading Judgment Detox by Gabby Bernstein. Oh, okay. And I love that she talks about be a witness to your judgment without mm -hmm. judgment. It's not as easy as it sounds. <clears throat> but it is that space around how do you show up as a witness to the exactly. opportunity possibilities around you. And it is that space of being able to hold two opposing thoughts. Because mm -hmm. I love, I'll post something and I get people that'll say, oh, Candy, I love that. That's right. You're right. You're right. My favorite is when I get somebody that says, Candy, you're wrong. And mm -hmm. then I'll respond and go, you're right. And they're like, what? And I'm like, I just happen to have a thought that was here. I just wanted to see what would happen right. and engage. I'm not saying I believe one or the other. Right. I just wanted to start a conversation right. to say, imagine if, Mm -hmm. Is this, this, and something mm -hmm. else altogether? I don't, I really think we get caught up in my truth means <clears throat> instead of right. saying my truth is nothing but a story based on my experiences, my right. beliefs, my wiring, my expertise, mm -hmm. my gifts, my perspective, mm -hmm. and it doesn't make it right, wrong, indifferent. It exactly. just makes it what it is for me. It's a mm -hmm. lens. Yeah. Because truth is the most subjective word on the planet. Exactly. Exactly. And, and wow, I can honor and understand and receive a different perspective. Doesn't necessarily mean I'm going to change my right, right. view. Right, right. Exactly. And mm -hmm. I'm willing to welcome and honor and say, and there could be another answer. I mean, exactly. I tell people all the time that, especially my business people, they get caught up in that black or white. I say, mm -hmm. I go, okay, not spiritually or philosophically, but mathematically, do you right, agree exactly. that one plus one is two? And mm -hmm. yes, mathematically, one plus mm -hmm. one is two, but so is the square root of four. So is three mm -hmm. minus one. So is right. two, nine, there's also right. mathematically exactly. an infinite <clears throat> number of numbers. So there's infinite ways to get to two. Right, absolutely. And if we think two is what we need, we forget that there's three, four, or five mm -hmm. infinite outcomes. So when you right. understand that mathematically and logically, as Einstein said, the law of attraction, everything else is not woo woo, it's physics, mm -hmm. it's energy absolutely. and how energy moves and is created and, and, and what happens inside that space. Yeah. When you realize that, then how can someone else not have another way right. to get to the same exactly. point or a yeah. different point. Mm -hmm. It just blows my mind that we get so locked in. Yeah. Right, wrong, black, exactly. white, yes, no, either or. <clears throat> when it's the gray where all the magic happens. Exactly. So if you look at World War II, so to this day, uh, so Hitler's truth and the Aryan Nazi way is that was their truth. They believed they needed to cleanse the world. Now, from the Jewish perspective, they were the ones who were demonized and they believed that evil fell upon them. So look at the two opposing things that happened right there. One of the biggest dramas in my lifetime, I'm here because my father was a good killer of Nazis, but uh, to heal that, I've embraced the Nazis who's killed his fallen brothers. Mm -hmm. That they're actually, uh, Bert Hellinger and um, my experience of constellation work is you have to include anyone who harm was done to <clears throat> economically or physically belongs to your family system. Yeah. That goes for CEOs who might have uh, overused employees without paying them. I mean, it gets down to dollars and pennies uh, karmically and interestingly. And so we embrace, so I, for, to heal World War II in my family system, I'm here because my father was an alpha killer and he died of a horrible cancer at 45 years old. So that's the winning side. 
you know? I, sometimes I wonder if the losing side uh, had it better than the winning <laughs> side with all the PTSD and suffering we see in the American military even today. So can we see, so their truth was they were doing good to the world from a Nazi perspective. And from the Jewish perspective, they're doing horrible things in the world. Right. So, and what I call as unintended consequences, I don't think the state of Israel would be here without Adolf Hitler. So Hitler's unintended consequence of his oppression and murder of Jews is creating a nation state of Israel, a safe place for Jewish people. Right. But we won't go to the Palestinian thing, that's a whole other ball of wax. But it's <clears throat> one person's truth feels right in one context, but then the world, the victims, <clears throat> excuse me, <clears throat> of that truth, view it in a totally different way. Absolutely. So both things are coexisting. Now the irony is Christina Goebbels, uh, who's the granddaughter of one of the prime uh, Holocaust creators, <clears throat> excuse me, is uh, done family constellations and her whole family has rejected her. Wow. Here, 80 years after the failure of the Third Reich, she is being excluded from the family system because she dared challenge that one of her ancestors did something wrong. Right. which means they are still loyal to the Aryan fantasy, I'll call it, that of that white world where everyone's blonde and gorgeous, you know, and ironically, Hitler was none of that, which is kind of interesting. And um, it, it just, it didn't work, but it shows you the family dynamics is, in her life are still loyal to Nazi because she was willing to challenge the fear and guilt and break away from the family system and say, hey, something really wrong. Uh, happened here, and I highly recommend if people are interested in World War II, Hitler's Children is a documentary DVD where all the perpetrators' grandchildren got together in Auschwitz with the surviving children of the an Jewish ancestors who were in Auschwitz, all in the same room at the close of the movie. And it was one of the most powerful things you'll ever see. I'm sure. And I, there's such a juxtaposition in... It is, yeah. <clears throat> it is, it's that space of... And, and I think there's so much kind of pause to take around the fact that the responsibility that she took to step into a space to say, I'm going to yeah. stop a cycle in yeah, the family exactly. of what doesn't feel open, doesn't feel mm -hmm. like it's a coming from a place of love, knowing that that space to be rejected was mm -hmm. an opportunity. And I think that's one of the things that for leaders is part of why they cop out and don't take that responsibility. Exactly. Fear that they may have to stand alone. Exactly. And while I'll say that it's leadership is not something that, you know, you're, you were bequeathed and so-and-so was bequeathed and you're learned and you were born with every single person has the opportunity to lead in the gifts that they were. Absolutely. Given. The challenge mm -hmm. in that comes, are you willing to stand in a courageous space to say, I may have to be the first one to stand alone. Because right. the only way effective change <clears throat> and the things that we're seeing, especially in light of current economics and politics and uh, mm -hmm. socio-cultural, all of the things that are happening, it takes those powerful moments of courage. It takes those people to say, I'm going to change the system. I'm going to yeah, open up the system and look for a way to <clears throat> heal what doesn't feel in alignment to be in that God space, to be in that universe space, to be in that love space. Mm -hmm. and know that I could be ostracized as a reason. Right. And it takes mm -hmm. one person willing to stand out to be alone, and then it just takes one to follow, right? It's how some of the other stories, whether it be Hitler or what's going on, <clears throat> how they got followers. It took one person to buy into right. that story, right. and then mm -hmm. it was a ripple effect. And the same right. thing happens on creating that open change that is that awakening that allows us a global healing. We're so... Mm -hmm that's so needed right now. And I do Absolutely. think everything is coming to this head to mm -hmm. say, man, there's never been a better time to be alive. Mm -hmm. We get to move away from the American nightmare and the global nightmare mm -hmm. and really step back into that space of the dream that we've Absolutely. talked about, but we're not walking that path right, at all. Exactly. Wow, mm -hmm. how powerful to actually see that shift in our lifetime. I think about, wow, talk about imagine the possibilities to go from a fully repressed, oppressed, to this awakening mm -hmm. that really could happen in our lifetime. Absolutely. Ooh, mm -hmm. I think that's awesome and beautiful yeah. and a space that lights me up, right? Mm -hmm. Absolutely, absolutely. And the Chinese say, Chinese, uh, uh, may you live in interesting times, and we certainly have that here. I call it Jeffrey Springer World. I'm just waiting for the chairs. Yeah, I call it the Desperate Housewives, everything going on. It's I reality know. television on steroids, but yes. Yeah. 
fun. So Gary, um, first of all, I'm, this conversation just, I so thank you for oh. really going there with me. Um, I, I love that we can play in this space. I know yeah. we've had some big conversations outside mm -hmm. of this. Exactly. And so I love that we can dance in this space a little bit here. And like I said, yeah. I know there's some people that may be triggered by yeah. what we're saying. And so I offer and invite those of you that are feeling triggered to ask yourself where that's coming from. Ask yourself if this is your time to do some work mm -hmm. to clear out why you're getting triggered right, exactly. and where that's coming from. Because some of that may not be yours that you're carrying. It may be mm -hmm. legacies and generations right. of exactly. stuff that you're bringing forward that needs to be closed. It needs to be healed. It needs to yeah. be moved forward. But Gary, I'm curious because there are also people that are like, man, I want to know more about how to clear some of this stuff out for myself, yeah. whether it be professionally, whether it be personally, whether it be yeah. both. How do they reach out to you? How do they learn yeah. more about this amazing? Uh, well, the best thing you, I just reinvigorated my website. It's gorgeous. And oh, you I can blog a video with this or that. It's just wonderful. I'll have, I'll have this show up there too. So people can listen yeah. to it. And uh, you can go to the website, uh, www.constellationhealinginstitute.com. And if you're called to reach out to me, Gary at constellationhealinginstitute.com, and we can arrange a 10 minute uh, free consultation, see how it may serve you. And ironically, just with the distance work, people, I do distance work from all over the world. Consciousness isn't physical. So when you change consciousness, any place, any location, quantum physicists have proven this, it changes everywhere at the same time. Right. So you don't even have to be present. We have plenty of conversations before. We do the work with a group to represent all the dynamics, whether it's your employees, your family, whatever. And then we have another conversation. You'll just magically see things shifting and changing inside and outside of you, even though you weren't in the room. So that's yeah. nice And I will tell you as someone who has done several distance constellations, mm -hmm. as well as in-person live yeah. group constellations, yeah. I've done several. It has been an incredibly healing and um, wide open experience. I've done healing with my dad and, and lineage in my dad's family. I didn't yeah. know it was still there. I thought I had done the work. Right, exactly. I even had an awareness that it was almost as if it was a gift given to me going, wow, this is part of my journey as long as I'm breathing on this earth and every exactly. layer that I get to peel back is another layer I get to offer for mm -hmm. others to invite them in that space. And it was really powerful because at first I got a little stuck. I was like, man, seriously, I'm going through this again. Exactly. I'm like, Wait, I'm going through this again. And there's a reason. Yeah. And I've also done constellation work to open up support around the abundance I'm bringing. Mm -hmm. in. Mm -hmm. And I have to tell you that both clearing out and healing some of that energy from the past Mm -hmm. And opening up a space where I can be more open to receiving and allowing abundance yeah. to come in and what support I need. Wow. It has mm -hmm. changed everything. Mm -hmm. A lot of how I show up now is a direct result of doing that constellation work. So I highly exactly. encourage and invite those of you that are feeling something moving in this to mm -hmm. reach out and have a conversation with Gary to learn more you may see you not may you will see a shift that you can't even imagine mm -hmm. if you're willing to be open to the process and it's Absolutely. just it's a beautiful um it, the first couple were like well this is a bit weird um and you guess what it's again it's that space of what scares you grows mm -hmm. you. what makes yeah, you uncomfortable absolutely. is your opportunity and so just can't say enough about the work that Gary mm -hmm. does i mm -hmm. think it's so powerful and so mm -hmm. needed yeah. And, yeah. and is so designed to support you mm -hmm. to yeah. create a much more magnificent and open and abundant mm -hmm. and prosperous mm -hmm. and joyful life mm -hmm. so reach out um, Gary, as we're closing, and I, I just first must say again, my deepest, deepest, deepest love, gratitude, and appreciation for you. You uh, truly are in my heart. You know that. And I love yes, you absolutely ditto. <laughs> in every way possible. Um, mm -hmm. As we're closing things out, what's one thing um, or something you'd like the yeah. listeners to, to, to marinate on as yeah. we're taking everything we said and bringing mm -hmm. it? Okay. No small task. <laughs> number, number one. <laughs> Number one, I would say there is no other. So mm -hmm. everything that they we were talking about, it's all inside of us. So we're in a tremendous point of power in the present moment to make choices. And so when you include uh, one meme I put out there, once something is whole, it's no longer a puzzle. Mm. I might have to steal that from you. <laughs> do, please do. 
It's my original quote, yeah. And yeah. I, will, oh, I will put that on, that's beautiful. Yeah, absolutely, and it's true. We're including all the ugly little pieces, the uncomfortable little pieces. They all have their place in the puzzle. Once it's whole, then you have peace. And what I also find is even in a 10-minute consultation with me, if I spark just an idea of truth in a person, even in that 10 minutes, that happened uh, at the GIS. I was talking to a couple of people. I said, wait, this is the truth that you're avoiding. I just said it, and it was to shift instantly without even doing a consultation. <laughs> So in one way, it's just getting to the nugget of truth is all that's needed. You don't have to go to a workshop. You don't have to do this. When someone can reflect back to you a subconscious truth you're not aware of and just say it or have you repeat it, it sends the ripple without even being at a workshop. So I think the truth is what's healing. The truth is what sets us free. And if it feels right to the person receiving it, you know, compassionately from me, the person who gets the insight, then the work is done. They don't even need a constellation. So it's about finding the truth, the nugget of yeah. truth that's hidden behind someone's fear or trepidation. Yeah, and I know that Gary and I have been able to do that for each other. Yeah, absolutely. One of the most beautiful. In fact, we just came back yeah. from an opportunity where we were masterminding yeah. and playing in that space, and it was so powerful how we got to offer that for each other and to yeah, be that absolutely. the truth in that mirror. And I love that the first thing you said was there is no other because right. everything we talk about, and I want you to really understand this is it starts with you saying yes to yourself. Yes, it absolutely. starts with you understanding that you are a powerful being, that you mm -hmm. are the one worthy of standing in a place to say, it's time for me to look at my truth and I'm going to bring in whatever resources, whatever influence, whatever support I need for people that are going to help me hold that mirror when it gets heavy to exactly. say, this is what I see that mm -hmm. maybe you're not aware of or you're having a, you're not willing to step mm -hmm. into because when you say yes to yourself and you do that mm -hmm. with such distinction and intention you get exactly what you need to open up access for that. Truth. Absolutely. It is yes. absolutely that easy. It's amazing mm -hmm. to me when people say how fast does it happen? As soon as you're willing to get out of your own way. Exactly. As soon as you're willing to take the responsibility to recognize that whatever is showing up is yours to mm -hmm. own. It's yours to decide if you want to change the story. It's yours to say, I'm willing to look at the whole and stop looking at the fragment, which is the puzzle pieces. Mm -hmm. And when you can do that and say yes to yourself, you start to destroy and eliminate the noise that's been getting in your way. Mm -hmm. And some of that's past baggage that's not yours, that then you can step forward and be mm -hmm. in a place of true leadership. Because yeah. now you are showing up full out you are in a place mm -hmm. to serve wide open mm -hmm. and you are taking the personal responsibility required mm -hmm. to stand mm -hmm. in your power, use your voice and be mm -hmm. purposeful, passionate and present mm -hmm. in the ways that you're engaging with yeah. other people. Yeah. And so it's beautiful. And I love that. I love you, Gary. Uh, thank, thank you, you an for being pleasure. on this show. Oh, uh, an honor and pleasure. Conversation. Yes, it's a, all a gift. <laughs> and thank you all for joining us today. As always, please subscribe so that you do not miss any of these powerful conversations. We are going to continue to peel it back. We're going to continue to go deep. As you can see, these are not surface conversations. Mm -hmm. So if you are feeling compelled and inspired, I hope that you will join us next time. Again, thank you to my beautiful and amazing, incredible guest, Gary Stewart. So much love for this man. So much love for all of you. And just know mm -hmm. that I'm sending heart to heart hugs. Go out mm -hmm. there and truly leave your legacy in every moment you show up today. So I will catch up with you later. Talk to you next time.